Wow. I've got to say, that was definitely a big surprise. Yo, dudes, the Empire's pretty chill. Maybe you could, like, join it or something. everyone, Lucamus Prime here, so it is time for a brand new movie review today, this time for a newly released movie of this year, and this is going to be for probably, of course, um, the first animated movie of this year that I'm going to be reviewing, and this is for a newly released animated film by Illumination and the company and Universal Pictures, made in collaboration of course with Nintendo, because this is a video game adaptation and all of a very popular video game franchise by Nintendo and this movie which I'm going to be reviewing is of course none other than this year's the Super Mario Brothers movie so now when it comes to this movie how was this made so after of course the critical and commercial failure of a 1993 live action Mario film which I have not seen and I, I don't plan to see because I heard it was terrible Nintendo became reluctant to license its intellectual properties for film adaptations, and and of course, um, and the, the the creator of Mario called uh, Shigeru Miyamoto became interested in developing another film when when Nintendo was bringing its older games to a virtual console service, and through Nintendo's work with Universal Parks and Resorts to create Super Nintendo World, he then met the Illumination founder. Chris Maladandri. By 2016, they were discussing a Mario film, and and it it was announced in, in January 2018 that 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 Universal and Nintendo would collaborate to produce it. And production was underway, of course, in 2020, and the cast was was announced in September 2021. The film, of course, premiered on 1st of April of this year in Los Angeles, and and of course got released today on April of the 5th. And now. While this film has had a stronger critical reception than the 993 movie, the film has divided critics who praise the animation, musical score, and faithfulness to the source material, but felt the film prioritised fan service and easter eggs over plot and character development. When it comes to my reaction to this film, guys, so... Initially, I was not really excited for this movie because I wasn't really much a fan of, of Illumination's recent movies back in 2021 20, because I hated the Minions movie and I hated the Grinch 2018 movie and I didn't like Secret Life of Pets 2. However, though, I did love Sing 2, though. And, of course, as well, last year's Minions Rise of Gru. So that gave me a bit of hope that they'd do something good with this movie. And when I saw the trailers, I was like, yeah, I'm definitely, I've definitely got to see this. It looks really good, so... So I went today to, to see this movie at the theatres, of course, and um, and I gotta say that I actually really loved this movie. Like this was definitely a big blast from start to finish. Like wow, definitely in my opinion one of Illumination's best movies we've done. Really is. So yeah, it was definitely an amazing blast. Really was fun to watch. So. I'm going to be talking about the plot of the movie in this review, so you've been warned, guys, this does contain major spoilers, so if you guys have not seen it, I'd recommend that you guys go to Uber Cinema to see it, it right away, because it came out today, so yeah, and before you see this, this review, so here it goes, I'm going to be counting up from 5 to 0, so 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, okay, so, so the film, of course, begins um, with introduction, of course, to the film's villain, of course, which is Bowser. And I gotta say that he was voiced in this, of course, by Jack Black. And Jack Black was definitely amazing as Bowser. A perfect casting right there. It's also very hard to tell that it's Jack Black voicing him because I think we use, like, effects to deepen his voice. But he sounds really great in the role. Definitely a perfect casting right there. That's easily my second favourite voice role of his behind Paul and Kung Fu Panda. He was definitely a great casting as Bowser. And when he's introduced, of course, we see him, of course, um, fighting... Um, and the penguins in this, led by the Penguin King, who was of course voiced by Kari Payton, and and he then of course steals was it like some sort of like gold star sort of thing, I think it was, and um, yeah, um, I think he called a superstar. So he gets this, and and he intends of course to to marry Princess Peach. Then of course we we cut to introducing the main characters, where we get to see Mario and Lu Luigi, who who of course live in Brooklyn, New York, and they're and they operate uh, the unsuccessful Super Mario Bros. plumbing service. 
and their father disapproves of Mario's decision to leave a high-paying job under the under the leadership of someone called Spike. Now, although to be honest, what I can definitely understand why Mario left that business because when I, when I saw Spike in this, in my opinion, Spike was very unlikable. That's whole one of my bad qualities with this movie because I think Spike was unlikable. Now, um, then they they of course um. We get a pretty funny scene where they're where, where they're stopping a leak in like some sort of like high end apartment with, with a dog called Francis. That was definitely pretty funny, and yeah, this film definitely had a lot of humor, which was definitely a great laugh. And and then after this, they then hear of a of a big manhole leak on the news later that evening, and they go underground to fix the plumbing, but they suddenly get sucked into a pipe and they get separated in, in the process. So. So Mario ends up landing in the Mushroom Kingdom where he meets Toad. So, now when it comes to Mario and, and Luigi, guys, now, I know that some fans didn't like the idea of casting Chris Pratt as Mario, but because Chris Pratt's one of my first actors, I, I was willing to give him a chance as Mario, and when I heard him in the trailers, I thought he sounded really good in the role. And I also don't have a problem with him not having the iconic Italian accent that the characters in the games that much in the film. Because, let's face it, you know, there has been, of course, some um, other voice actors for Mario before Chris Pratt who didn't use the Italian accent. No one complained about roles, so I'm not going to complain about Chris Pratt not using it. And Chris Pratt was actually a very good casting in the role, in my opinion. He really was. Although, in my opinion, though, no one can totally embody Mario better than Charles Martinet. As far as I'm concerned, guys, Charles is Mario. And speaking of Charles, guys, what's amazing in this film is, you know how there was reports that he, he has a camera appearance in this movie? Well, what's amazing is, in this movie, he has a camera appearance as Mario and Luigi's dad. So that's amazing, isn't it? And also as someone called Giuseppe as well. So, yeah, it was definitely nice to hear the, the original voice actor for Mario in this movie. Really was pretty nice. And Charlie Day, of course, also voiced Luigi. And he was actually hilarious as Luigi. That's probably my second favourite voice role of his behind Benny in the Lego movie. And, yeah, Charlie Day was really great in the role of Luigi. He was hilarious. Like, so funny. So, Toad, of course, appears in the Mushroom Kingdom. And he's, of course, voiced by Keegan-Michael Key. And i got to say that Keegan-Michael Key was actually also pretty funny as Toad, in my opinion. He also worked really well as him. Really well. Definitely, in my opinion, better than other... The roles I've seen, which I thought his weren't good. Like, for example, his roles in, in the Lion King awful remake and also as well Toy Story 4. And also as well, the, in terms of live action, the, the terrible film called The Predator 2018. I thought he was much better in this, keegan Michael Key was, absolutely. So, so um, after this, um, Todd informs Mario that Luigi has ended up in the Dark Lands, which is under, under control of Bowser. And he wants to destroy the Mushroom Kingdom to marry Princess Peach, of course. So Toad takes Mario to meet Princess Peach. Princess Peach misses voice by Anya Taylor-Joy. And I gotta say that Anya Taylor-Joy also was a very good casting as well in the role. I think she voiced her really well, in my opinion. Um, definitely, in my opinion, a better performance of hers compared to 2020's The New Mutants, absolutely. All of her role of Anya is definitely her role or in Split and Glass, but this is definitely my favourite voice role of hers, 100%, because she was great in Mrs. Princess Peach. She worked really well as, as her. So, Luigi is unfortunately captured by Bowser's forces, and he's caged above a sea of lava alongside the other prisoners, including the penguins who we saw earlier. At Peach's castle, Peach reveals her plan to, to recruit the Kong Kingdom to help against Bowser, and she agrees to take Mario along after he eventually almost completes an obstacle course. And that scene was also absolutely funny, where we see Mario trying to do obstacle course and he keeps failing. Like, it was so funny, and with, with, with the music as well. Like, I had a really great laugh watching this film. This film has lots of funny moments which keep you going. Like, wow. Because this film, guys, is 92 minutes and it's very well paced. Because of all these funny moments that keep the film going. So... Toad comes along, along with Mario and, and Princess Peach to recruit uh, the Kong Kingdom. And on their journey, Peach shares that she does not know the full extent of her origins because she was taken in by the residents of the Mushroom Kingdom as a baby and was eventually crowned their princess. So Mario speculates that she could be from the same world he's from. Then they go to a Kong Kingdom where King Cranky Kong agrees to help on the condition that Mario defeat his son Donkey Kong in a fight. Now... Fred Armisen was good as Cranky Kong, but unfortunately, though, 
my biggest bad quality was film ball for me was probably that i did not like the characterization of donkey kong in this film because he was of course voiced by seth rogan in this film guys and as you guys know i, I hate seth rogan i i lost respect for him of course and but unfortunately, I think he was a miscast in the role because he wasn't even trying to make his, his voice unique. It just sounded like Seth Rogen voicing an ape. Like, it didn't sound like an ape-style voice at all, like how, it, how Donkey Kong sounds in the games or anything like that, sadly. So, unfortunately, I think Seth Rogen was a big miscast and probably my, my biggest by quality of this movie. But, but yeah, um, I still like him better, of course, as Mantis, Mantis in the Kumbu Panda trilogy role. Oh, but, yeah, as Donkey Kong, in my opinion, he was a miscast. So, after a shaky start in their fight, Mario powers up into, into his cat form, which was actually pretty funny as well, and he's able to defeat Donkey Kong. So, so Mario, Peach, Toad, and, and the Kong Kingdom used carts to, to drive to Bowser, and it was definitely amazing to see the iconic Mario Kart in this. Definitely nice to see. Unfortunately, but on the Rainbow Road, they get ambushed. And then a part of the road gets destroyed, and that causes Mario and Donkey Kong to fall into the ocean, and they get consumed by a moire. And unfortunately, the other Kongs get captured, but thankfully, Peach and Toad are able to get to the other side, and they re return to Mushroom Kingdom, and they urge everyone to evacuate. Unfortunately, though, Bowser arrives, and, and, and he unfortunately ends up torturing Toad to get Peach to say that she'll marry him, so... So she agrees to marry him on the condition that he doesn't torture Toad. So meanwhile, Mario and Donkey Kong are of course stuck inside the Moire. And they're able to find the rocket from Donkey Kong's cart. So they're able to escape it and so yeah. At the wedding reception, of course, and taking place in front of all the caged people who, who are going to be sacrificed in the ceremony. Um, Peach, however, decides not to marry Bowser. And she powers up an ice flower and she, she she's able to freeze Bowser and, and free the people in the cages. And then Toad and Donkey Kong also as well will help, help fight off, off the army when, when Donkey Kong and Mario fly into a ceremony on their rocket. And then Mario diverts a Banzai Bill away from Peach's castle and into a pipe that's sent into a Mushroom Kingdom. However though, oh, this causes the elements from Mushroom Kingdom to be transported to Brooklyn. So it looks like, of course, Bowser is about to, of course, take over Brooklyn and all that. But then, um, we see that there's a superstar near, nearby. And Mario and Luigi are able to work together to get to it. So Luigi, of course, is able to block Bowser's fire using using what appears to be like the top of a bin lid as a shield, which, which is very creative. And they obtain the superstar and they get invincibility. Nice. So they work together to defeat Bowser. And they're able to use... Um, um, a mushroom on him which of course caused him to shrink to a very small size we saw it early when mario was fighting donkey kong he accidentally ate the wrong mushroom and it went to small size but he did to bowser and he gets put into a bottle and the residents of brooklyn celebrate even for mario brothers of course being heroes and including in spike himself and also mario's father and what's also very touching is mario's dad also says that he's proud of him so that kind of feels like Charles Martinet is passing on the torch to Chris Pratt, to be honest. It kind of feels like that, really. Like, that's really a, an amazing moment right there. The original voice for Mario is praising, of course, the new voice for Mario in this movie, which is pretty cool. Then it's, we would, we would afterwards, but Mario and Luigi are now residents of a Mushroom Kingdom. So that was a very nice ending right there. Then... In the mid credit scene, we see E. Bowser is still shrunk and he's playing a song and he gets hit by a guard to be quiet. And then, yeah, the credits were definitely very nice, but very creative. And, and, and in the post credit scene as well, of course, um, we also get a pretty exciting scene, which, which is probably a hint towards more to come because we see what appears to be like some sort of like white egg with, with green spots on it. And then all of a sudden it hatches and then, and then we hear quite a familiar voice and... And I think it was hinting towards the, the appearance of Yoshi. So, yeah, it looks like, of course, um, Yoshi is going to be a, a character, uh, of course, appearing later on, of course, which is very exciting, isn't it? So, oh, yeah, um, it looks like um, he'll be appearing in, in of course, um, 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 pop some sequels, which is pretty cool. And, um, yeah, so it's pretty... So this film was definitely a really amazing blast from start to finish and with lots of funny moments and 
the animation was also absolutely gorgeous. Many shots looked very realistic, especially, of course, in the shots in Brooklyn, New York. And, yeah, it was, it was definitely yeah, a really great blast to watch. And this has given me hope that Illumination will hopefully keep making good movies. I really hope so. But, as you guys know, I'm not watching this Despicable Me 4, though, or because that's in development. I'm not going to be watching that because there's no point in seeing that. Because, in my opinion, that franchise ended with, with a second movie. But I would, however, love it if they did a sequel to this, though, because this left me wanting more, absolutely. Because it was, they, did, they did a great job of this. They were also very faithful to the games, but there was lots of Easter eggs related to the games in this movie, which you can spot. And they even included the iconic theme song as well in the movie, which I was happy about. Because if that theme never gets old, it was nice to hear, to hear it in this in many areas, too. So, yeah. So, as I said, guys, my only bad quality was, was probably Seth Rogen and as Donkey Kong. I think he was a miscast, in my opinion. And, and didn't sound like he was trying to, to make his role unique at all. And, of course, as well, uh, I said of a star, but in my opinion, Spike was unlikable. So, yeah, that's what I'll say. But, nonetheless, though, this film was definitely a really great a, a one to watch. Really great. Definitely, in my opinion, one, one of Illumination's best movies I've done, in my opinion, in recent times. Absolutely. So... I hope we get more of this movie, absolutely, in the future, absolutely, so, so yeah, I'm one of the people, guys, I actually really love this movie, it was definitely really fun to watch, it was a great laugh, and a great story, very well paced as well, so yeah, and it definitely left me very excited for more to come, so yeah, so, if you wonder why I'd give this movie a score out of 10 for, guys, well, because of all those bad quarters I mentioned, I'll probably give it a very a solid score of 9 out of 10. So, guys, this is me doing my review for this year's The Super Mario Bros. movie. Um, so, you know, drill, guys. Be sure to give this video a like. Also, be sure to let me know in the comments uh, what you guys thought of this movie. If you've seen it, let me know below what you think. Also, be sure to join the team prime by pressing subscribe if it's going in the future. If you would like to be a member, you can respond if you're using a piece of ads or, or you can link the description. And I'll see you all later.